Okay, guys. If you've watched my content for, you know, a while now, you might have noticed that I am super into VR. Which is actually something that would have surprised myself a few years ago, because I thought VR was the biggest, most cringe, trendy fad. I hated it. I, I, like, every time I tried, like, PlayStation VR, which was my, you know, the limits of what I'd tried before, it made me nauseous, it wasn't very intuitive, it just kind of didn't feel like virtual reality, it just kind of felt like strapping a screen to your face. It didn't feel like what I imagined VR was supposed to feel like. Even at that early level of uh, technology, I, I expected more, right? Um, and then, years passed. And my friend Ethan, who is very much a VR enthusiast himself and has um, the Valve Index, I believe is what he has. The best VR... It might not be the Valve Index. I think he has, like, the HTC Vibe. Regardless, he has a very good VR setup. Not, not like, top of the line, but very good. And he's super into VR, and he always told me, like, Zan, listen, I know you're not into VR, I know you think it's a trend, I know it's not your thing and it makes you nauseous, but you should really check it out. It's There are some fantastic games in VR, and I'm like, oh, eh. But one day, you know, I'm chilling, and something you might know about me is I'm a Walking Dead fan. Video pops up my recommended for a game called Walking Dead Saints and Sinners. It's just footage of someone killing zombies in it. And it's literally a VR zombie killing game, and it looked amazing when i found out that you could get a valve index and use like controllers that have finger tracking that like track your hands and like when you pick things up in the game like your your hands are moving in real life and it's like you can hold guns and shoot them and, and stab the zombies and everything like it is it looks so fucking cool and the game is really fucking cool and it inspired me to save up and get a valve index vr headset which is what i have now and I'm super into VR, and obviously when I got my VR set up, I played all sorts of VR games. And one of the games that Ethan got me into was VR Chat. I love VR Chat. In fact, um, I've done multiple uh, get to like group fan meetup get togethers in VR Chat, where like after stream, I'm like, "Hey, everybody, um, join this VR Chat world with this code. Um, you don't even need to have VR gear to join it. You can just do it on your PC. I'm gonna be in there." And you guys can see me in VR where it's tracking my body motions, and it's like, it's almost like meeting me, like, physically, but not really, you know? And I always found that a lot of fun. We even did um, watch parties in there, because they have worlds that are just like a big, big movie screen, and you can sit down together in VR and watch, like, movies together in a, like, in an environment, digitally. I don't know. I, I find that to be cool as hell. And we had a lot of fun doing it. Um, haven't done it in a little while, though, because doing VR requires a lot of space, but it is what it is. However, last time I went into VR chat was with my friend Ethan, and I, I'd heard some things about VR chat. I'd heard about the ER peers, and I heard they were super degenerate, and out of morbid curiosity, I was like, listen, Ethan, take me to where they're doing the, the weird shit, okay? I want to see it. I want to see the weird shit. I was not prepared for what I was going to witness. Um, I really wasn't. I was not prepared. Ethan took me to a world in VR chat. The way that you get around, for those of you guys that don't know how VR chat works, the way you get around is like you have this little hologram wrist watch that when you turn your wrist and look at it, I can't believe there's wolves right here, but I don't have bones to tame them. When you look at the, the watch on your wrist, it puts up a little hologram that lets you navigate through different... Um, like uh, menus and what you can do is you can select a world from a large list of different worlds you can sort by different types of worlds you can search for specific worlds you can enter a code to enter a specific one join your friends worlds all that kind of stuff no more wristwatch oh yeah yeah it's just a hologram that appears in front of you now i forgot it's just like a glass panel yeah my bad um but yeah basically you you can like place down a portal that you can go through to new worlds once you've selected one, like place a physical portal down in the world, and other people can even follow you through it, and it stays open for a certain period of time. It's a really neat game, and it feels really just unique. Oh my god, that's a wolf and a fox fighting. Who's gonna win? <gasps> the fox won the fight. Holy shit. I guess we know who wins. Holy shit. Um, that is not realistic, though. Um, basically, uh... Uh, uh, oh, fuck, I got totally sidetracked by the fox and the wolf fighting. Um, 
Yeah, uh, basically, Ethan took me to this place. This little bar, I guess you could say. It was more like a club. And it was very dimly lit. It was, like, very much a kind of, like, sex club kind of look to it. And he takes me to this, like, bar. And it's a bunch of people that are all talking and, like, pairing up. And they're going off to these private rooms. Ethan stops one of the women that are there. And she has this avatar that's, like, a three-foot-tall, like, big titty fat ass hourglass shaped anime girl with bunny ears basically and um and, and and like absurd like very glittery like colorful makeup and and you know there's insane jiggle physics of course like i'm not even kidding insane jiggle physics going on with this person's avatar just just shameless and 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 so we start talking to her and she's and and i'm like Hey, so how's this all work? I'm just curious, out of like morbid curiosity. What? How's this all work? Like, how are people like s having sex with each other in this video game? Like, how is this possible? And she was more than happy to explain. She was more than happy to explain. Chat. Um. Uh, oh my god. Um. Oh my god. A camel. A camel. Um. She basically explains it by saying that they hook up uh, sex toys. Like, they get butt plugs, um, dildos, vibrators, all that kind of stuff. Fleshlights. There's all sorts of different hardware you can hook up, apparently. They hook these things up and synchronize them with the game. So that the movements they make in real life are translating to the game. And the movements they make in the game are are translating to their in-game partner's real-life sex toys, and vice versa. So they are literally thrusting into each- like, one's thrusting and feeling a thrusting motion, and the other's feeling a thrusting motion. The other is- is receiving, you know, the- the- the inverse, right? So it's like, a whole, like, it's an expensive setup from- from what I've heard as well, yeah. It's a whole thing, right? And... There are literally people who go to these clubs, and they meet people there that specifically have this hardware that are looking to do this, like, ERP shit. And they just meet up, and they go to a private room together, and what happens, happens. You know? Simple as that. And there are ones where they do it in, like, public, out in the open, too. It's very bizarre to witness them doing it as well. Like, you'll, you'll just see them openly doing it publicly. And it's just like, wow, okay, this is the closest I've ever been to, like, being in a, a sex club, I guess. Jesus Christ. And they're like, they have their mics on, they're hot micings, so they're like, la la so I've seen, so basically, the reason why I'm telling this story, chat, is to emphasize that I've seen some shit. Okay? I've seen some shit in VR chat. This video is called, and none of this is hidden. None of this is hard to access, to be clear. Like, uh, let's not pretend like any of this is, like, hidden, dark underbelly of VR chat. This is not hard to access. It is, like, you'll see these worlds on, like, the front page. That said, I am now very interested to find out what the dark side of VR chat is. So we've got this video here, and that's what the video's called, and I'm hoping it delivers. So let's just check it out. I have no idea what to expect from this, because I felt like I already saw the dark side. Yeah, no, I mean, I pay well, like, people that are with me, they're happy, like, there's one girl who quit her day job, because it, you know, pays, it pays really well. Yeah, See, this is like my full-time job, that's all I do is make VR chat. It's becoming so hyper-realistic oh, to the VR point where people board. are making mods and little additions that they can add to their avatars oh. that gives them fully working private parts. Yeah, so I, was I got this. something in the mail. This is honestly unreal. I'm like super thankful for each and every one of you guys because without you guys, this would not happen. So thank you. So in this video, my friend and YouTuber, I am loose. Okay, imagine being like so anxious about sex. Like you're such a virgin VR chat player that like you say the word private parts instead of like dick or vagina or penis or vagina or pussy or cock or whatever, right? Like... I don't know, it's just funny to me, because it, it kind of reminds me of, like, a kid who's just kind of, who kind of isn't used to saying those words, or isn't allowed to. Find it funny. Ooh, 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 ooh. Goddamn creeper. We can repair the beach. It's fine.
Let's cook up a little charcoal really quick and resume. He said, talked about his true thoughts on VRChat and the things he says are pretty shocking. VRChat is one of the biggest virtual reality games out there. With over 20,000 people playing the game every single day, it's practically the home of the VR community. It's big. People can escape into new, exciting, and sometimes strange worlds and be- I honestly think that like VR chat should just be the VR hub. Like when you boot up VR and you go to your little VR homeroom, like that that should be what VR chat is. Like VR chat should be that. Like when you turn on VR before you select a different game or anything, I feel like that's what it should be. Like sort of a metaverse uh con concept style like oh you can invite your friends to your private room and then you can always just select a game to go into from there, right? And they kind of have that with Steam, but, like, not really. I, I really feel like the company that makes VR Chat and Steam should just partner together and, like, integrate them somehow. I feel like that's the future of VR being more seamless and just feeling... Like, VR doesn't feel fully seamless and futuristic yet. And that's one of the big downsides to it for me. Whoever they want. I like to say it's like dreaming with your eyes open. But what happens when virtual reality becomes your actual reality? For those of you who are unhappy with your lives, VR becomes your happiness and your way of coping. And that's when addiction takes root. I'm hooked. I have people on my friends list. Every time I log on, they're online. Every single time. Like Damn. whether it be two in the morning or two in the afternoon, they're always online. They literally live inside of VR chat. Omega Recovery, a mental health Let's service, go. released an article explaining some of the symptoms of VR gaming addiction. And it's bad. People would stop doing things as simple as cleaning or eating. When researching, we even found some people who put off sleeping to stay in the game. They would isolate themselves from their friends and family, only wanting to talk with people in VR. The video is loud. Oh, thank you, Chad. I appreciate it. And lastly, people experience serious issues like depression, anxiety, and increased aggression. The way that people can get addicted to VR chat and games alike is when they're lacking of something that is necessary in their real life. And then they use VR chat as an escape from those problems. A YouTuber called Mr. Drew came forward with his own story. After he was introduced to VR by a friend, Drew got himself an Oculus Rift and started playing free demos. And once he finished those, he discovered a new game, VR chat. I soon found myself spending hours upon hours in VR chat, making friends, singing karaoke, watching movies, exploring yeah. worlds playing games. Sadly, it wasn't long before these sessions would spiral out of control, and before Drew knew it, he was hooked. I bought index controllers and vibe trackers, allowing my fingers and entire body to be tracked while Jesus! VR. This only fed into my addiction. Literally has finger trackers so they can play piano in VR. Individual finger tracking so you can play piano in VR chat. That is fucking insane. Like, we're, like, I don't think you guys understand. This is, this technology has gone so far in, like, just a decade. I'm genuinely, like, frothing at the mouth excited for what VR is going to look like in, like, five to ten years. It's going to be nutty. Making it harder and harder to leave this weird world I felt pulled into. Soon, Drew started to experience some of the symptoms we talked about. I started to sleep while in VR, only removing the headset to go to VR. work. It was as if the virtual world was my primary reality. As if I was living in this metaverse and only leaving it to keep the body I was plagued with IRL alive. But after two months of recovery, Drew was able to heal and is now able to enjoy VR chat in a healthier way. But there are so many people like Drew Based. who get dangerously hooked on this game. On VR chat, the servers you join are called worlds. And some of these worlds can be gateways to even bigger vices because there's a darker side to VR chat. One that Let's includes staying out late and partying right inside your headset. The VR chat nightlife. The this nightlife is what I was telling is the you term about. used for- That's what I was telling you about. Nightlife. That's the term. Like, a lot of these worlds will have, the ter will have a tag called nightlife. And that's like when you're going out- There can be anything from gambling, like you can play poker and cards with people. There are mini games where it's like bowling and just fun little games and bars. They're just bars that are literally meant for playing like Cards Against Humanity and like fake drinking alcohol and just hanging out together at the bar. Um... And some of them are sex clubs. And there's dating clubs as well, like ones for meeting people to date. Yeah. 
It's wild, dude. For activities available for people at night. This can mean things like bars, nightclubs, and casinos, and can also mean darker things like substance issues and other activities not safe for work. Yeah, okay, they do private um, therapy sessions. And like, there's also private like drug and like taking sessions, like drug injection shit, but also they do therapy sessions in VR, in VR chat. There are people that do therapy sessions there. Probably not the most reputable therapy, but you know, it, it exists. But what if I told you that these things happen on VR chat too? The buried underneath this game filled with silly avatars is a disgusting nightlife. Well, it does, and it's thriving. Every Friday and Saturday night, VR chat worlds like the Void Club were filled with hundreds of users. The I've been to the Void Club. That, that was the one Ethan took me to, I think, was the Void Club. One of the ones Ethan took me to is the Void Club packed with fucking people the void club is a nightclub with djs a dance floor and other concerning it's features there's like it's fucking big like you get lost in it and it's scary it's fucking terrifying like i, I just wanted to like i i like i kept it was like there's a horror outside my house in the game um yeah it's it's terrifying to be in that fucking place but i wanted to see the degenerate shit i i, I was curious and my friends followed through and they showed me the degenerate shit. Back rooms, there's like secret rooms that you can lock the actual doors on. Sometimes people can, you know, go into a door or into like a room and get freaky with each other inside of the Void Club. And while everyone in the VR chat community has different opinions about the place, there's Creeper. one thing that seems dangerously common. People drink in the Void Club. And I don't mean virtual drinks. People will drink massive amounts in real life while playing VR chat. People will just obviously just get drunk there a lot, they dance there a lot, but you would kind of you gotta be a VR, like, you gotta be, like, your brain has to primarily exist in VR to be able to handle being drunk in VR. God, when I would take one hit of weed while using my, my VR headset, I'd get so nauseous. Like, I gotta be sober while playing VR. I can't fuck around with that of expect out of like a regular club but inside of vr chat and instead of human beings it's anime boys and this may not sound like a problem but it might when you anime. realize that vr instead of human beings it's anime girls and anime voices <laughs> yeah like you will hear the most like the the most insane anime girl impressions like in the highest quantity on vr chat it's wild chat's age rating is 13 and up not only do young people feel pressured to join but it can leave them vulnerable to these party yep. animals and sometimes to preds in an interview done by brandon fm the person he interviewed revealed a group of men who would look for vulnerable girls on vr chat they gather women whether it's in the world they're in or through invites they never really ask their age at all they don't really care about what age they are once they had a group of girls they would start a drinking game with them one guy would stand in the middle of the group and play a song throughout the song he would raise his hand and whenever his hand was raised the girls would have to drink and this game would go on for a long time because they prepared a list of songs to keep the girls playing by the time that they were done with all the songs so they're trying stuff, to get them drunk they basically have their picking of drunk girls sure this may not be in real life and they can't do anything physical to them but they could still easily influence them and sadly this isn't the only group like this on vr chat there are dangerous groups that seek to cause damage the gangs of vr chat before we talk about these insidious gangs i want to tell you about today's sponsor incogni so i'm especially passionate about incogni because my goal for this channel is to help you guys stay safe online chances are your personal information is floating all over the internet if you try typing your name or your parents name online you'd probably find information that you thought was okay come on without you even knowing it and you is i tried doing this myself manually and different to use the code visual venture okay, we'll get 20 percent okay honestly if you guys are serious about keeping your personal information safe online incogni will help personally for me i'm gonna use them probably as long as i live click the link in the description and use the code visual venture to protect yourself right now like all online games there's a toxic side to their communities but most games don't come close to vr chat valorant has salty players warzone has kids yelling slurs but vr chat has gangs sure and as silly as that sounds they can be pretty serious i'm lucid gave us an inside look into the minds of these uh, games the fucking what a gangs. vr chat gang pretty much is is a group of people that meet online usually 
that have issues with their own family in real life, as far as I can tell. So they feel like they have to get that family protection feeling that all us humans innately need and want. So they meet these gangs online in VR chat and uh, they feel like, okay, I'm part of this like bigger group. I feel like I have purpose in this life because yeah, of what my- crime you know, are they up to? I'm currently in. Cyber what these crime? gangs do is take advantage of VR chat's vulnerable systems to crash people's Pedophilia. games remotely. Uh, oh, they fucking, okay. So, all right, all right, okay. <laughs> My friend Ethan has an avatar that is just a black hole that spews infinite rats. It's an avatar that's just a, a point in space spewing infinite rats that just cover the room until there's nothing but blackness and the room crash and the entire world crashes. It doesn't crash your computer, but it crashes the world and sends you back into the lobby. We never use it, but, like, if we're just hanging out together in a private world and it's, like, it, it's for comedic, it's good comedic timing, like, someone will just switch to it and all of a sudden there's just a rat explosion. Like, it's just an absurd amount of fucking rats. Like, they just turn into a tiny point in space exploding with infinite rats. <laughs> put something into the gun so it would shoot out particles it crashed the entire world except everybody but you would just delete these gangs believed that they would gain clout for crashing people but they also did it to silence people who knew about their illegal operations it turns out that these gangs actually stole people's custom-made avatars and would resell them for an insane Jesus. amount of money like ripping out Oh, shout out to Salty Ace, by the way. They made me a uh, baller-ass custom Xanderhal avatar. It's literally like a Spartan armor, but it's black and white and has my logo on it and everything. So it's basically like Xanderhal branded Spartan armor. It's dope. So that's my VR chat avatar. Avatars and like reselling them and things like that. Oh, thousands of dollars easily. I would say at least ten thousand. And I am Lucid talked about the consequences of messing with these gangs. They all have like a mob mentality group motive where if they don't like somebody or a person doesn't fit into their like beliefs, for an example, they'll get put on something called the KOS list. If they see a Holy user shit. on the KOS list or on site list. They go after them with everything they've got. These it's gang members would have apps on their PCs to scan thousands of VR ah. chat worlds to see who's in them. Sometimes they would even try to get rid of them permanently through something called a GPU crasher. With a GPU being one of the main components of your PC, you'd be lucky to play Minecraft at 12 FPS without it. This is how it's done. On an avatar, there would be some sort of particle effect or like a mesh crasher and it would have so many particles in it. Yeah, I'd be careful out there. Just keep Instead of closing the game like it would do now, it would leave it open. So if you left your game open, it would spin your fan and spin your fan faster and faster and faster until... The VR chat developers eventually stepped in and introduced safety settings in an attempt to stop the GPU crashers. But the problem still happens today. Currently, the gangs have seemingly gone underground and no one has heard of them since their peak in 2020. But some still say they stalk the servers searching for new victims. Roleplay. That's fucking scary. ERP. Roleplay is exactly dude. what you think it is. For the sake of Let's YouTube, I'm going to be referring to the this as roleplay or RP. While it's nothing new, it's been in online Let's games for ERP. decades, and it's one of the main parts of VR chat. In some VR chat worlds, there are private booths people can go to, fully equipped with beds, soundproof walls, and a lock system to keep soundproof people from walls. seeing what goes on. Soundproof walls. That yeah, yeah. That is that is true. Cause like. And the, these VR chat worlds are so small and there's proximity voice chat. So without that, you just hear just nonstop, just constantly through all the walls. Yeah, they're soundproofed on behind closed doors. People even use full body tracking specifically for this purpose. It's yep. becoming so hyper-realistic to a point where people are making mods and little additions that they can add to their avatars that gives them fully working private parts. But what makes this especially bad is once again, the young people playing. A study uh, yeah. from 2019 shows that 51% of 11 to 13 year olds have seen content of that nature online. But VR chat takes it to another level. Not only are there VR chat worlds made for this, but also avatars designed with RP in mind. These kinds yep. of avatars are not allowed on public servers like the Void Club, but yet so many VR chat worlds have it. To show you just how much inappropriateness there is, we sent our scriptwriter CJ into VR chat and these were his findings. There's some worlds 
we found that were so graphic we can't show them to you guys. One world was centered around a certain niche. When you entered, it stated that you had to be 18 or older. On the surface, the world seemed pretty normal. That'll it keep had them chairs, out. a couch, and a TV screen. But there were four private rooms. Each room had a restraining device in the middle of it, and on the table beside it were different tools. What disturbed us the most was that these restraints came in different sizes, and not all of them were adult size. So I'm Lucid, and myself included, believe that this role-playing epidemic could be the future. And there's a huge problem that comes with that. They get this hyper-realistic expectation of their partner looking a certain way, acting a certain way, and especially in VR chat, when you have a full working body, identical to real life, nobody in Holy real life shit. can mimic that exact visual appearance that the VR chat anime girl that was made in Blender and Unity will uh, ever come close to a real human being. And while we can't stop the creators of these RP games, we can do our part and encourage our friends not to join in. The story of Tech Gangster. I, I don't think that's there necessary. There are so necessary. many pranks on VR chat, but there's think, one who was- Okay, let's not pretend like you're making this video to make so people know to keep their friends from doing this, all right? You're making this video because it's entertaining and we're all morbidly curious about these degenerates, all right? Let's not pretend like it's anything different. Come on. Oh, wait, I, I should make this a three by three. Or not? Yeah, mm, mm, Yeah, we'll make it a three by three. Kink shaming? Yes. Yes, I am kink shaming. I'm sorry, do you think you're watching a different streamer right now? Wh who do you think you're watching right now? Who do- who is it you think you're talking to? Was so infamous that his name alone would make people furious. I know, Ted Gangster is a very well-known- well, around these parts, at least. We're, I just I call literally know 30 women who had encounter with this one Guy. The clip you just saw Jesus. came from the YouTuber Quits. Quits' brother was harassed by tech gangsters, so Quits went on a mission to find tech himself. He went to different VR chat worlds to ask people about tech, and clearly they don't like him too much. But who is this guy, and what did he do? Tech's real name is actually Brent, and he took advantage of countless women across nice. VR chat. Quits interviewed two key people from Brett's life, his former friend and his ex-girlfriend. During the interview with his former friend, who we'll call Megan, Quits found some sickening details about how he played VR chat. His surroundings, he always had little children around him. He would be such a bad influence on them. Brent would also let his Shit. anger get in the way and would verbally lash out at Megan. The next interview with Brent's ex-girlfriend revealed the dark truth about living with him in real life. She said that he would do things like dump her food, throw stuff, pour liquid on her couch, and much more that we can't talk about over here. Christ. Thankfully, she's safe from him now, and I hope she's doing a- Dude, there are some menaces playing VR chat out there. Oh my god. It, okay, are there any VR chat players in, in, in my chat right now that can tell me, like, how, how prevalent is this? Is this sort of, like, being a little bit over-exaggerated, like, the prevalence of this for the video? Or is this, like, a fairly common occurrence- to have to worry about this kind of worry, like the the GPU bombing, the like all that stuff. This is a very fringe group. Yeah, because in my experience, most of the like, for example, um, that's an ogre. I really hope it's not blowing up my house. Um, in my experience in VR chat, if there's a kid in a public room, and there has been sometimes, like we'll be in a public room and some kid will join, and you can just tell by the sound of their voice as a kid everybody will start bullying the shit out of the kid not because they like want to take like they want to bully the kid or anything but to get them out of there like trying to get them to leave because they're like this little squeaker does not need to be in a vr chat world with a bunch of adults but, like even though there's nothing nsfw happening in there we want to be able to like swear and like talk about adult shit and not have a kid around you know it just feels weird having a kid around when you and your adult friends are just trying to have like adult hangout time, I guess, you know? Like any any parent in chat knows exactly what I'm talking about. Um, so, yeah. Okay. As for Brent, no one truly knows what happened to him. Some say he still visits VR chat, but I just hope adult. people know to- <laughs> the, way, the way I worded that, it was funny. Adult hangout time, Smuggy. No, um, but like, if you're just kind of chilling with your friends in a public VR chat room, and there's some like 12 year old in there, it's like, Bro, like, I, I'm not hanging out with a fucking 12-year-old. Like, get, get him out of here.
to stay away. But if you thought Tech Gangster was bad, he's just the tip of the iceberg because this next person took advantage of people and made an organized business out of it. The adult business. On May 19th, right. 2022, a VR chat YouTuber named Verum exposed the secret crimes of the user Maze VSF. It turns out that Maze ran an adult video business centered around VR chat. This Is gave him quite video? the reputation with the community and not a good one. He was placed on multiple KOS lists and has been banned oh. from the game over 26 okay. times. You might think that people hated him because of his business, but that's only part of the reason. People truly hated him because of his methods of finding models for his videos. Maze would log oh. on to servers and search for vulnerable female users, then manipulate them yeah. with his lies and charm to make them want to join the business. He hated yeah, them. No, I mean, I pay well. Like, people that are with me, they're happy. Like, there's one girl who quit her day job. Bro's, you know, bro's a pays, fucking pays tater tot. Well. Yeah, this See, is like my full time job. That's all I do is make VR chat. Once they're interested, he would ask pictures of their IDs, passports, driver's licenses, and Aww. anything to confirm they're adults. But that's not uh, why he asked for their identification. He asked because once the girls sent their personal information over, they had fallen them. into Maze's trap. He can use it against them. He yep. would also use other techniques Blackmail. to make girls feel a sense of security. He would say things to make them feel special. Why do you think I ran up to you? Why do you think it was you who I went up to? You're beautiful for who you are. He would also make these oh girls believe God. that he was in love with them and engaged in relationships with them. And in the real world, these are the same methods the that Lover criminals method. use to lure women into. During yeah. these relationships, Maze I think we can all think of one particular person who did this. Would secretly record their RP sessions and would make the girls send him pictures of themselves. And not just Jesus. pictures in VR chat, but actual pictures of themselves in real life. So that when they realized Maze was exploiting them, Maze could blackmail them into silence. Because I'm telling you this right now, if I smell you, if I can smell you near any of my friends or any of my patrons, if I can hear your name, I'm gonna make you regret ever crossing me. It really makes you wonder what kind of man Jesus. would do this. Well, the same man who would engage in multiple relationships while being married himself. The same man who was also a father of two children. Maze had no shame and was even proud of his manipulation skills. If I manipulate someone into doing what's better for oh them, oh my god, so you're not doing the job. This all guy is day, Andrew Tate. Out, or B, you'll get manipulated into doing what you should be doing in the first place. But little did Maze know that Verum was on his trail and recorded everything. And Maze Yo. finally got what was coming to him. Just a the few days hero. after Verum uploaded the video, he released an update on the 23rd of May. Verum's video led to a virtual witch hunt to chase Maze off VR chat, shut down Let's his company, go. and rescue the girls. Maze was left powerless and came crawling to Verum, begging for mercy. Please, please delete, please let me die. You win, you've won, you've accomplished your goal. I am not joking. Holy you are shit. not ever gonna hear from me again. Squad the W. Rest of your life. You will go on. You might think of me some time to time, and you can feel victorious because you were. Bro. Goodbye. I hope Maze faces the justice he deserves and the girls find the peace they need. But this happy ending is a rare one. He Believe was begging. Me, most stories don't end like this because sometimes these people cross the bridge from virtual reality to reality. A mother's worst fear. What's a childhood fear you remember the most? Maybe it was the thought of what lurks under your bed? Or was it a fear of something hiding in your closet? Well, one day, that fear came true for someone. In 2020, a mother heard strange noises coming from her daughter's bedroom. Her daughter has been acting strange for the last month. She was secretive, anxious, and was spending more time in her room than with her family. And these noises were the last straw. The mother stormed into her daughter's room and heard shuffling in her closet. She flung the closet closet open. She screamed. Standing in the closet was a man covering himself up in her daughter's clothing. The man was JR, and he was living in a girl's closet for over a month, and they met on VR chat. Holy fucking shit, dude. A month. Could you imagine finding out that your daughter has been being raped by this guy she met online, this fucking ma this old man she met online for a month who and has been like keeping him in a closet and he's groomed her into doing all this. Can you fucking imagine? He would be 
turned into a pile of guts. Oh my god, like the- uh, just a- he would be- there wouldn't be anything left for the cops to get. Oh my god. Yeah, holy shit. I feel like the vast majority of parents would go into, like, feral mode and murder the fuck out of that guy on sight. Like, could you imagine? Like, oh my god. And having him right there in the closet, like, at your mercy? Holy shit. There wouldn't be anything for the cops to take to jail. And, and, and like, for most American parents, particularly. Gunner, no. Holy shit. That is so fucking horrifying. Oh, God. The girl was using a fake account on VRChat and told JR that she was an adult. After some time, JR drove all the way from Louisiana to Spring Hill to meet her, which is an eight hour drive. JR then convinced this girl to let him stay in her house and hide in the closet whenever someone was home. This went on for over a month before he was found and arrested. The public world on VRChat can be a direct line to vulnerable young people who fall prey to these monsters. There's still one more to talk about, and this person created a cult filled with young people. The imposter. In August the of 2022, imposter? Brandon FM exposed a cult operating on VR chat. It was called the Dark Guild and was run by Alyssa Afton. On the surface, the guild was a large Discord server that held virtual meetings through VR chat. Alyssa welcomed people of all ages to hang out and chat in That's a friendly environment, but Alyssa's true intentions were far more evil. The guild wanted to start operations where they would Nap criminals like dealers, bank robbers, and such. Alyssa was encouraging young people to engage in criminal activity and used her reputation to encourage her guild to do what she says. Vigilante know. justice. So I know you might be scared to kill that the fuck? person. It's up to you. I know for a fuck this, I'm doing it again. <laughs> it's too fun. Alyssa claimed that she ended five people. Whether this is true or not, it didn't matter. It terrified the other members, which is exactly exactly what Alyssa wanted. And this leads to what we believe is the- They had a fucking, like, murder cult on VR chat? What? A fucking VR chat murder cult? Are you serious? I- I- wh Why are there camels on my beach? What is life? There's a robot coming for my goddamn blocky bussy. Uh, okay. The real purpose of the Dark Guild, to gather these young people for Alyssa's own desires. Alyssa engaged in multiple relationships with young people in her guild. Age doesn't uh, matter. Of he's course. same age. And I'm dating him. He's, he's how old? He's... See. This audio was secretly recorded by Brandon when he went undercover as a teenager to find information about Alyssa. At that time, Alyssa was not only dating that boy, but also married to another person virtually on VR chat. Someone uh, who was attending summer school at the time. During that same recording, Alyssa tried to roll play with Brandon, even though he said he was too young. I'm, that implies child, you, right? you mean like ELP? Yeah. Alyssa did this with so many people in her guild, and some were affected mentally. The mental scars this whole experience has put on my mind are so extreme that I was recently diagnosed with Stockholm Syndrome. Thankfully, Brandon Jesus. managed to shut down the entire server. The Dark Guild was disbanded, and Alyssa's powers were gone, right? Well, this is where the story should end, but sadly, Alyssa is still out there. But Alyssa's oh. name tells us a lot. Alyssa... Afton. The name Afton is a reference to the series Five Nights at Freddy's. I, I thought it might be. I didn't say it at the time, but I thought it might be. God damn it, yeah. After the character ended the lives of five people. So when she claimed to have done the same, it's clearly a lie. She's nothing more than an imposter. People will still go on VR chat, and that's okay, right? Because my goal is not to get you guys off any platform, but to be aware of the platform. So how do you stay safe? The best way to stay safe on VR chat would definitely have to be to have moral grounding as a human being. So first figure out who you are, what you stand for, and stand firmly on it, and then you can enter VR chat. Because only then you will have a positive experience in the game and it won't actually ruin you as, as a person. Because it, it does feel like you're playing tug of war with the devil sometimes on that game where everyone's getting drunk and all these avatars are.
get in by all the clubs and all of the above. But if you have a good standing before you press run on the exe file, you're going to be okay. Matter of fact, it might even be a positive game for you what to play. The research on VR chat felt different. It was unlike any other platform we covered because the other platforms were that? in the palm of your hands. But virtual reality makes there? you feel like you're living in another world. When people escape reality to go to VR chat, it truly becomes their reality. Like I said, it's like dreaming Whoa. with your eyes open. Just a few years Whoa. back, virtual reality was a dream of science fiction. But the internet was also once a dream. And so were computers and smartphones. The future is coming. And my request to you is to spread this message so that we can be prepared once the future is here. Visual Venture. That was a really good video. There's that there was some nightmare scenarios described there. Holy shit. That story about the guy that was in the closet. Oh my god. That that literally like made my blood run cold. That that made my blood run cold when I heard like the the twist, I guess you can call it to that story, the reveal. Oh my god. Holy shit. Like I was thinking maybe it would just be like, "Oh yeah, her daughter ha had made like a a boyfriend of the same age as her online and they were like meeting up in their bedroom nope just a pedophile had groomed her and was in her room and living in there for a month in the closet jesus christ there's a sequel to that video real drop the link i'm down to watch it yeah that video went hard holy shit yeah, I want to learn more about this, because if I'm going to go on VR chat again, I want to know... I, I, I want to be prepared. I want to be prepared to deal with this crazy shit. You know? Jesus. Oh my god. There is, but you're on mobile? Okay, if somebody could find the sequel, I'd absolutely be down to watch it, um, if you want to drop it in chat. Yeah, absolutely. Holy crap, that was a good video. I'm going to sub to that channel, and I recommend you do too. Let me find out what the name of it is. I'd never watched it before. Visual Venture. I'm going to turn on notifications for that too. Drop that like. Hot damn. Here, maybe I can find it myself. Oh, it's called The Horrifying Truth of Online Virtual Worlds. Okay, this is kind of... I mean, it's kind of the same, right? But oh my god, that was so good. Like, VR is scary. VR is genuinely scary, but it's also exciting, and I, I really don't know what else to say about it.